Well, welcome back to the next Code Club. I think this is our fourth Code Club that uh, we've been working on. I know many of you that have been watching or that are online tonight today um, have been from the very beginning. And so the data set that we'll work with today should look fairly familiar. It's a data set of uh, candy data where the folks at 538 looked at about 150 or so uh, different types of candies and they broke down different characteristics of those candies. Things like whether it had chocolate or fruity flavor, whether it was in a bar or was a package of small pieces like Skittles or M&Ms. Uh, they looked at like the sugar content and the price. And then they asked people to tell them which candy they liked better. And so they took pairs of candies and said, do you like this or this, this or this, this or this? And they came up with a win percentage to figure out which candies people liked the most. And so last week, we started working with the function called filter, and we used the other function with it called count. And so that filter function allows us to take a data frame that might have many, many, many rows, like thousands, tens of thousands, millions of rows, and then pull out the rows from that data frame that match a logical question that we're perhaps interested in, right? And so, um, you know, last week we looked at things like, do you care about grammar? And if you cared about grammar, how often were you to use the Oxford comma? Okay. So this week, like I said, we're working with the candy data. Um, if you celebrate Easter, uh, perhaps you still have candy laying around your house that you're trying to hide from your children. Perhaps you're like me and you're just trying to eat their candy. Um, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed of that. Um, so we're going to load the tidyverse package and we're gonna get the candy data in. And what we're gonna work on today is uh, seeing more features of the filter command, as well as using a series of commands called group by and summarize to get summary data for different subsets of our overall data frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to switch over to our studio and I will um, open up a new script and I'll paste those lines in. And so that you all can see my screen easier, I'm gonna slide this over to the right and I'm gonna make my font a bit larger so that everyone can see it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and highlight and run those lines. And down here in the console, if I type candy data, I can see that my candy data is a data frame with, I guess, 85, it was 150, 85 different candies and 13 or 12 different variables that they collected on each of those types of candy. And so you can see the various factors that they looked at, um, and then some of the types of candies that they collected data on. And so you'll recall from last week, we did things like candy data, So say we want the data on the 100 grand bar, which I don't know anybody that really likes the 100 grand bar, but um, we could say competitor name equals equals 100 grand. So we run that, we get the row back for the candy from the person with, uh, or for the candy, the 100 grand, okay? Similarly, instead of the equal equal, we could do exclamation point equal, and we talked about how the exclamation point means not. So in things that are not 100 grand. And so you see that we no longer have 100 grand, that it starts with three musketeers. So that's what we covered last week. We also then said, um, you know, we could complement this with a count function. So then that's of all the things that aren't 100 grand, um, let's count the bars that we have. And we see that there are 20, candy bars left after we move the 100 grand and 64 non-candy bars, okay? So that's what we talked about last week. And so what I wanna do now is show you two other things about the filter function that will make our data analyses a lot uh, easier. So the first is to note that when we look at this data frame, the candy data data frame, that a lot of our columns have this LGL under them, which is logical. It's a logical variable, it's true or false. And the the argument of filter gets evaluated to determine whether or not the value is true or false for each row of the data frame. If it's true, we get that date, we get that row into our new data frame. And so if I were to say, um, do it down here. If I were to say candy data 
and then to pipe that um, and then do filter chocolate. I will then get a new data frame with all the rows where a candy contained chocolate. And so we can see that here in the second column where all the values are true. So sometimes this confuses people because they're like, I'm just putting in chocolate, what? Um, but again, the value of chocolate in that column is trues and falses. I could do ch chocolate uh, equals equals true, and I get the same result. But that equals equals true really isn't necessary. Okay. So again, that's a really useful um, feature of our logical variables in our data frames. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you about the filter function. The second thing is that sometimes we want to filter on a continuous or quantitative variable, like say sugar percent or price percent or win percent, right? Perhaps we want to look at low sugar candies or we want to look at expensive candies or we want to look at um, the really popular candies, right? And so uh, the first thing that we'll do is to look at the more expensive candies. So to do this, we can do candy data. We can pipe that to filter where we then say price percent greater than say 0 0.50. So it's a, it says price percent, but that's a fraction. <laughs> it goes from zero to one, not zero to 100. So we run this. We now get the 42 candies that were above their price percent index. And so I think what they did is they took the prices of all their candies and they then scaled them between zero and one. And so we've filtered to get the more expensive candies. Again, we could also get the low sugar candies by doing candy data filter um, sugar percent, let's say less than 0.3, okay? Those in the, uh, 0.33, lows in the lower third. And there we find that we have 34 candies that had low sugar, at least on this scale. Right. So maybe we want the expensive low sugar candies. What would we do? Well, you hopefully remember from last week that we talked about the ampersand meaning and and the vertical line meaning or. So we can combine these two functions to one filter to say price percent greater than 0 0.50 and sugar percent less than 0 0.33. And so again, by combining both of these logical statements as an and for the, for the value of that, for that row to be true, both of them have to be true. If one of them is false, then the result is false. And so when we run that, we find there's 12 rows in our data frame, 12 candies that were more expensive, but had lower sugar, okay? So things like Milk Duds, which I'm a big fan of Milk Duds, um, fit that bill, right? They were um, expensive, but low sugar. Well, we could also do the opposite, right? So we could say candy data, filter price percent greater than 0 0.50 or sugar, percent less than 0.33. And so this will give us the expensive candies or the low sugar candies. And we find that there are 64 candies that were more expensive than average, but had less sugar than most of the other candies. And that or means that either statement has to be true. So within R, we could also say um, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, right? So for this example, it won't change the results, but we can do greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, equals, not equals, um, as some of our logical functions to make comparisons uh, between two types of variables, or two types of values, okay? So this is what I wanted to talk about with filter for some new features. And again, I think those are, those are pretty powerful. So, um, uh, at the first code club that we did, one of the questions I posed was if we took chocolate candies, um, were, can were chocolate bars more expensive than chocolate bite-sized candies, right? So is a Hershey's bar more expensive than M&Ms or those types of candies? And so hopefully you can hear in my posing of that question 
that there's a filter statement, right? So we want to get all of the candy that's chocolate. So I can do candy data, and I can filter to get chocolate. Right? So I now get all my chocolate candy. But within that, I want to group my data by whether it's a candy bar or not. Right? And so I can then use the function that we'll learn today called group by bar. And then a new function, summarize. And I'm going to say um, mean price is the mean function of price percent. So again, what we're doing is we're taking our candy data data frame. We're filtering to just get the chocolate data. And then we're going to group the chocolate data by whether or not it's a candy bar or not. And then if it's a candy bar, we're going to get an average price. If it's not a candy bar, we're going to get the average price. So running that, we see that the, can the chocolate bars are more expensive than the chocolate individual candies. Okay. So in a future code club, maybe we'll talk about doing a statistical analysis here to know whether or not this difference is statistically significant. But maybe to help kind of give us a sense of whether or not this difference is statistically significant, we could then also add the standard deviation of the price. And that's going to be equal to the SD price percent. And then we can get an N, so the number of candies in that bin. And so now we see that we have the standard deviation and the N. And so we have a pretty good representation of the different of candy bars and non-candy bars. And the standard deviations aren't identical, but they're they're reasonably close. And so it does seem that chocolate bars are more expensive than bite-sized chocolates. Who knew? All right, so that's a way that we can get multiple summary values out of our grouped data. Well, what if I want to group um, by whether or not it's a chocolate, whether or not it's chocolate, as well as whether or not it's a bar? So to do that, what we need to do is we need to add to our group by function and remove our filter function. And so we can do candy data, and we're going to do group by. And I'm going to leave the arguments there blank for a moment because we know this next step, which is summarize mean price because mean price percent and SD price, SD price percent. I'll do n equals n. Okay. For, for me, when I do these summary functions, I generally like to give the mean, standard deviation, and the n, or perhaps if it's not normal data, like the median, IQR, and n. These are kind of the, the summary statistics I like to see. So what are we going to put in the group by? So here we'll go ahead and put in bar. And I'm also going to do chocolate. So we can group by multiple factors if we separate those column names by commas. So I generally have only really grouped by two things at a time. Um, I think it would be pretty rare to do three or more different uh, groupings. Uh, it kind of gets overwhelming. And I've misspelled chocolate, I noticed. Need a space. So if I run this, I find that I have um, a decent number of candies that are chocolates or not, bars or not. Um, that there do not appear to be many uh, barred candies that don't contain chocolate. Um, I don't know if that's like an almond joy. I don't know. But you know what? You now have the power to write your own filter function to go back and figure out what is a um, non-chocolate candy bar. Okay, so I'll leave that for you all for homework. But what we see here is that um, if it's a bar, um, even if it's a non-chocolate bar, we only have one example of that, like I said, but its price is comparable to what we found for the chocolate bars. And the non-chocolate um, non-bars, so the bite-sized non-chocolate candies, like a Skittles say, tend to be cheaper than anything with chocolate or anything that is a bar. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So something I want to point out to you is that if I were to do candy data and then group by um, chocolate or group by bar, eh, sometimes it's too helpful. But just running those two commands, we see an added bit of text to the output of our data frame. 
And so this is telling us that it's grouping it by bar. Now, when we go ahead and do our summarize with say mean price, that group by, that grouping goes away. I don't know if you noticed it, but when we ran this statement up here that I have on my lines 19 to 21, where we group by both chocolate and bar, the output still has that grouping. And so if you group by more than two or more different factors, the output of your summary will still have groups. Now, I've always found that this feature is, is not very helpful. Uh, it's rarely ever been helpful. I'm not really sure if it's ever been helpful. <laughs> so what I like to add after doing this is ungroup. And so now if I run ungroup, uh, it's unhappy with me. Huh. I wonder why. Oh, I've got a typo here. I've got it. This is J. All right. So once I clean up all my typos and then do ungroup, I see that that grouping goes away. Okay. So again, this is a way of showing that we can group by multiple factors. We can, I mean, grouping by one factor is totally legit. But then we can get multiple bits of summary data out. Uh, there's many different functions that you might find useful for putting in this summarize um, function argument list. So things like mean, standard deviation, um, our n. You might also want to put in like the median, IQR for the interquartile range, um, maybe the min, the max, things like that. It can be any function as long as it only returns one value uh, for a set of data that's been given to it. Okay. So with that. I have a series of questions for you all to engage with. Let me bring those up here. And so the four questions I'm going to have you work on is to determine how many of the candies that won more than 75% of their matchups had chocolate in them. Do fruity candies have a different average price than those of non-fruity candies? And then how do the prices of the more favored candies compare to those that are less favored? And then finally, I invite you to come up with your own question to answer with the functions we've discussed today. Okay. So with that, we're going to go ahead and break and have you work in groups. And we'll come back in about 15, 20 minutes for you all to share what you've done uh, and to compare our results. All right, so I think everybody is back now. Um, would anybody like to share how they did the first problem uh, of, of determining how many, many of, how many of the candies that won more than 75% of their matchups had chocolate? Sure, go ahead and share your screen if you wouldn't mind and we'll see what you did. Thank you, this is the easiest one. So. <laughs> So I wanted to share. Um, okay. So uh, what we did first take our data set. So I think you're sharing the web page rather than our studio. Yeah. No, this this is our studio. Yeah, but what we oh, I I couldn't do that. Oh, okay, sorry. Here we go. Can you see now? Still coming. So can you see now my yeah. R? Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is filtration uh, in terms of win percent. Is higher than 75. And then count how many of them are. Um, wait, didn't. I think it. it I forget that the, this one. 
I think the up on 32 and 33, you have a partial pipeline started. So I think if you highlight those three lines oh, okay. and then run it, it'll be happier. Oh yeah, here we go. There you go. Great. Five of them, yeah. Wonderful. Thank Five of them, you. <laughs> you're welcome. Would another group like to share um, whether, how they determined whether or not fruity candies have a different average price than non-fruity candies? We could go. Okay, go ahead. So we grouped it by whether by fruity, and then from there we uh, calculated the mean price. So then, if we run that, it would show like true or false. So false would be the non-fruity candies and true is the fruity candies. So we saw that there was a difference in the mean price of them. Great, wonderful, thank you. And then the third question was, how do the prices of the more favored candies compare to those that are less favored? Anyone like to show how they went about figuring that out? I can give it a shot. Let me uh, open up our studio here. So um, how do the prices of the more favored candies compare to those that are less favored? And so here I think we'll do a, a, a double group by. So we could do candy data and pipe that to uh, group by. And we're gonna do more favored, so uh, win percent greater than 50, and, um, oh, it's just a single, okay. So we'll just do win percent greater than 50, and then pipe that to summarize, and then we'll do uh, mean price equals mean price percent. And we see the candies that were more favored uh, were actually more expensive than those that were less favored. Um, and who knows why that is? Um, or uh, I guess the other question is like, they're, they're not giving us a, um, an absolute price. It's more of a relative price index. So the average price is going to be uh, 50. So um, that doesn't mean like the difference between something at like 25% is a whole lot cheaper than something at 75%, right? So it might only be a couple cents different. So maybe if we had candy price per pound or something like that, that would allow us to see you know, how meaningful these differences in price are. So anyway, um, definitely fodder for future important research. Um, anybody uh, come up with a question to answer the function, uh, their own question to answer with the functions we've discussed today to dig into the data a little bit deeper? that they'd like to share? Uh, we, we, we try to pursue what you, what you kind of hinted to at the beginning, the best candy, I guess, or the most optimal one with low sugar okay. content. Uh, I can share my screen to see, because sure. we have a, a winner. Awesome. I mean, kind of. <laughs> uh, so the first thing we were looking at, we're trying to see if there is, I guess, uh, candies with high win percent, so over 90 and low sugar content, but then if we, on this you can see we have like we have a lot so we try to to filter it more and have it um to find only the candies with very low i guess in sugar so even 2.1 uh but then we noticed wait something is wrong uh oh wait no it is correct um Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is correct. So when we did this with uh, candies with uh, 1% over 90, you see actually that we don't have any, uh, which maybe makes makes sense because we need a lot of sugar, I guess, to <laughs> for candies. Uh, so we tried to be not as greedy. So we had like 80 maybe. So maybe we'll have a, a winner here. Um, and then we did. And then there is actually one. And then we tried to find what's, which one was that. 
and that was the yeah there is miniatures so Very that cool. was that was interesting so the Reese's miniatures have very popular, but really low sugar. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Does anyone else have an example they'd like to share? That's fine. Um, great. Well, um, thanks for participating today and hopefully you um, felt good with more practice using filter. This group by and summarize um, those two steps, I find to be really powerful. Um, I was just talking to a friend by email who has all this data. They've got a bunch of technical replicates and biological replicates. And in my mind, I was thinking, well, you'll probably want to group by the technical replicates or group the technical replicates together, perhaps by biological replicates, get a mean, and then compare across your biological replicates. Um, perhaps with another group by type of thing, right? So it's a, it's a very common series of steps for summarizing data. And um, like I said, it's, it's very powerful and you can get really far with a few basic functions like mean, standard deviation, n, median, uh, things like that, all right? Mm -hmm. So um, any comments or questions people have before we sign off? Well, it seemed like you all, as I was popping into different groups, it seemed like you all did a really good job of grasping the material and then using it uh, with these questions. So unfortunately, we're going to have to take a one-week hiatus. Next, next Thursday, I'm going to be teaching for the University of Michigan during this time. So we'll be back in two weeks with the next Code Club. So look for something um, at the beginning of a week and a half from now um, uh, on the website announcing the next uh, Code Club. So. Thanks again for coming. And I know many of you, if not all of you, have been to multiple code clubs so far. So thanks for your support. Uh, by all means, feel free to shoot me an email if you have any um, ideas or suggestions for things that you'd like to hear about. Um, I'm trying to kind of gradually build up pipelines. And um, I'm very happy to do whatever you all are interested in doing. So uh, with that, thanks. Have a great Thank week. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're not eating too much candy while we're hanging out at home. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>